Ryan, how you doing? This is my name is Paul Paul Boyd. You know, I'm here uh, live uh, here from uh, sort of a little bit there, and I'm here live here in uh, beautiful downtown Dartmouth. And right now I'm in my wardrobe room. Uh, this is my man cave for uh, all my clothing and uh, and, uh, and personal items. And uh, basically, uh, what it is is uh, today on uh, today's uh, show we're gonna do things a little different and change the format. And uh, Basically, what I'm doing in the format here is we're going to start out uh, tell you a little bit of background on myself. My name is Paul David Boyd. I'm born and raised here in uh, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, Halifax, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia area. And uh, I was born here for 12, 1972. I'm 49 years old. Uh, and uh, I'm an ordained minister with the Universal Life Church. We believe that all uh, all faiths are equal under the eyes of God. We are all children of the same universe. So that means if you're, it doesn't matter your sexual orientation, uh, if you believe in uh, the Wicca or you believe in uh, Hindu, Muslim, Islam, or whatever other religions there is, whether you're uh, Baptist, Catholic, whatever you uh, are religious, we believe that you are under our blanket, our umbrella, and so we believe in universal life. We also are unique to many churches. We allow we were the first church to allow uh, same-sex marriages, and also the, the first church to obviously uh, legally authorize uh, hand fasting uh, in traditions. Uh, the church is located in Sacramento, California, the national headquarters for uh, Universal Life. They've been around since the, the 1977. Uh, they have many famous uh, uh, ministers who have been ordained and done reform marriages, such as The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, uh, Conan O'Brien, um, Robert Colbert, uh, Lady Gaga, uh, actually Paul McCartney from The Beatles is also an ordained minister, and, and many other famous people. You can look it up on the internet to go to URC uh, Celebrities, uh, sorry, ULC, Universal Life Church Celebrities. You find out all the many people from Hollywood and from the uh, various industries across the broad spectrum have uh, are ministered with Universal Life Church and are legally allowed to perform marriage in, mo in most states, the United States of America and everywhere in Canada. Uh, that includes Alberta, I believe, Alberta and British Columbia. The rest of Canada is not on board yet, but they soon will be. Um, hopefully, uh, in the near future, they will allow our church to be, uh, our ordination to be recognized. But uh, we have ways around that if you do want it once the uh, the COVID uh, scares over and we're back to uh, a new a uh, forward to a new future uh, we may be able to find ways that you could go to uh, one of the closest states to uh, to where your home is or one of the closest border areas and probably get permission to uh, perform marriage like uh, a lot of people here in Halifax um, who are same-sex marriage or are under Wick and would like to get married at Cascade Park in Maine so that's probably gonna be our base until we get the approval here in Halifax to perform uh, legally perform marriages. We can do it. Uh, we can also have the, the ceremony performed in uh, in uh, the state of Maine in Cascade Park or any of the beautiful parks around there, even along uh, down in Calais um, and not that far from the Canadian border. Um, it can be arranged. Your marriage can be uh, as simple as, uh, as a contract. You can even I believe now it can even be done vitally by vital vitally, little vitally, little country of Italy. No, it's done by video, video conferencing, Zoom. So I think it is actually legal in some states now that you can get married over the internet and it may help in the future also people that cannot get outside of their home, their, their other homebound uh, because of illness or that it's just not practical for them to uh, leave or they may even have uh, agoraphobia or something that they can't leave their home. Uh, so we can bring the, the, the church to them so they can perform the marriage if they like. Um, also behind bars, if there's other ways um, that we're looking in the future and this is how the future of marriages are, are going to be and Universal Life is one of the church organizations that is leading the way. Uh, for more information, you can go to ulc.org, and if you'd like to donate to my campaign to help me out uh, here, uh, help me pay for my video and all the software and things and all the time I put in here, um, I'm not paid right now, um, and if you want to make a donation, you can uh, go to ulc.org, put uh, Reverend Paul Boyd Canada in brackets on your, uh, and, and uh, make payments pay with the Universal Life Church, but on your envelope, make sure you put down Reverend Paul D. Boyd Canada, and I will get a percentage of that. Uh, the donation to help my campaign pay for my videos, cameras, software, etc., and and the further training I'm doing. I'm going to change the format a bit here. After now that I've introduced myself, introduced what the Universal Life Church is, I'm going to do a we're going to have a a, a reading from the Kings One. And that's today's um, Bible reading. We're going to have that, and uh, as our uh, program develops over the future, we're going to have readings from other books and other other uh, Wiccan books as well as other religions, uh, Islam, and stuff like that. That. Uh, if you want to have your uh, one chapter from your book read in, read in, if it's in English, possible, bring it to our forward and we can uh, put it on for you, as they say down in Maine. So without further ado, we're going to go and now here we're going we're to read in the bio today's Daily Bible Study is from 
Kings 1. It's Kings, uh, Kings, uh, sorry, Kings 1, chapter 7. First Kings 7. But Solomon was building his own house thirteen years, and he finished all his house. He built also the house of the forest of Lebanon. The length thereof was an hundred cubits, and the breadth thereof fifty cubits, and the height thereof thirty cubits, upon four rows of cedar pillars, with cedar beams upon the pillars. And it was covered with cedar above, upon the beams, that lay on forty-five pillars, fifteen in a row. And there were windows in three rows, and light was against light in three ranks. And all the doors and posts were square, with the windows, and light was against light in three ranks. And he made a porch of pillars, the length thereof was fifty cubits, and the breadth thereof thirty cubits, and the porch was before them and the other pillars and the thick beam were before them. Then he made a porch for the throne where he might judge, even the porch of judgment, and it was covered with cedar from one side of the floor to the other. And his house where he dwelt had another court within the porch, which was of the like work. Solomon made also an house for Pharaoh's daughter, whom he had taken to wife, like unto this porch. All these were of costly stones, according to the measures of hewed stones, sawed with saws, within and without, even from the foundation unto the coping, and so on the outside toward the great court. And the foundation was of costly stones, even great stones, stones of ten cubits, and stones of eight cubits. And above were costly stones, after the measures of huge stones and cedars. And the great court round about was with three rows of huge stones, and a row of cedar beams, both for the inner court of the house of the Lord, and for the porch of the house. And King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. He was a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass, and he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works in brass. And he came to King Solomon and wrought all his work, for he cast two pillars of brass of eighteen cubits high apiece, and a line of twelve cubits did compass either of them about and he made two chapiters of molten brass to set upon the tops of the pillars. The height of the one chapiter was five cubits, and the height of the other chapiter was five cubits, and nets of checkerwork, and wreaths of chainwork for the chapiters which were upon the top of the pillars, seven for the one chapiter and seven for the other chapiter. And he made the pillars, and two rows round about upon the one network to cover the chapiters that were upon the top with pomegranates, and so did he for the other chapiter. And the chapiters that were upon the top of the pillars were of lily work in the porch, four cubits. And the chapiters upon the two pillars had pomegranates also above, over against the belly which was by the network. And the pomegranates were two hundred in rows round about upon the other chapiter. And he set up the pillars in the porch of the temple, and he set up the right pillar, and called the name thereof Jachin, and he set up the left pillar, and called the name thereof Boaz. And upon the top of the pillars was lily work, so was the work of the pillars finished. And he made a molten sea, ten cubits from the one brim to the other. It was round all about, and his height was five cubits, and a line of thirty cubits did compass it round about. And under the brim of it round about there were knobs compassing it, ten in a cubit, compassing the sea round about. The knobs were cast in two rows when it was cast. It stood upon twelve oxen, three looking toward the north, and three looking toward the west, and three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. And the sea was set above upon them, and all their hinder parts were inward. And it was an handbreadth thick, and the brim thereof was wrought like the brim of a cup, with flowers of lilies. It contained two thousand baths. And he made ten bases of brass. Four cubits was the length of one base, and four cubits the breadth thereof, and three cubits the height of it. And the work of the bases was on this manner. They had borders, and the borders were between the ledges. And on the borders that were between the ledges were lions, oxen, and cherubims. And upon the ledges there was a base above, and beneath the lions and oxen were certain additions made of thin work. And every base had four brazen wheels, 
and plates of brass, and the four corners thereof had undersetters. Under the laver were undersetters molten at the side of every addition, and the mouth of it within the chapiter, and above was a cubit, but the mouth thereof was round after the work of the base, a cubit and a half, and also upon the mouth of it were gravings with their borders four square, not round. And under the borders were four wheels, and the axle trees of the wheels were joined to the base, and the height of a wheel was a cubit and a half a cubit, and the work of the wheels was like the work of a chariot wheel, their axle trees and their naves and their fellows and their spokes were all molten, and there were four undersetters to the four corners of one base, and the undersetters were of the very base itself. And in the top of the base was there a round compass of half a cubit high, and on the top of the base the ledges thereof, and the borders thereof were of the same. For on the plates of the ledges thereof, and on the borders thereof, he graved cherubims, lions, and palm trees, according to the proportion of every one, and additions round about. After this manner he made the ten bases, all of them had one casting, one measure, and one size. Then made he ten lavers of brass, one laver contained forty baths, and every laver was four cubits, and upon every one of the ten bases one laver. And he put five bases on the right side of the house, and five on the left side of the house, and he set the sea on the right side of the house eastward over against the south. And Hiram made the lavers and the shovels and the basins. So Hiram made an end of doing all the work that he made King Solomon for the house of the Lord. The two pillars and the two bowls of the chapiters that were on the top of the two pillars, and the two networks to cover the two bowls of the chapiters, which were upon the top of the pillars, and four hundred pomegranates for the two networks, even two rows of pomegranates for one network, to cover the two bowls of the chapiters that were upon the pillars, and the ten bases, and ten lavers on the bases, and one sea, and twelve oxen under the sea, and the pots, and the shovels, and the basins, and all these vessels which Hiram made to King Solomon for the house of the Lord, were of bright brass. In the plain of Jordan did the king cast them, in the clay ground between Sukkoth and Zarthan. And Solomon left all the vessels unweighed, because they were exceeding many, neither was the weight of the brass found out. And Solomon made all the vessels that pertained unto the house of the Lord. The altar of gold and the table of gold whereupon the showbread was, and the candlesticks of pure gold, five on the right side and five on the left, before the oracle, with the flowers and the lamps and the tongs of gold, and the bowls and the snuffers and the basins and the spoons and the censers of pure gold, and the hinges of gold both for the doors of the inner house, the most holy place, and for the doors of the house to wit of the temple, so was ended all the work that King Solomon made for the house of the Lord. And Solomon brought in the things which David his father had dedicated, even the silver and the gold and the vessels, did he put among the treasures of the house of the Lord. First Kings 8 Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel, and all the heads of the tribes, the chief. Hi folks, I'm back, um, and uh, that was the uh, Book of Kings, uh, Kings 1, Chapter 7, of our daily reading um, here on uh, the, in, in Paul Boyd Live here, and uh, live to you. And uh, basically I want to tell you what today's, uh, what I did today, today, I, uh, well actually I had a real problem yesterday, uh, I didn't do my show because I was in the hospital, I, uh, uh, I had for about four days my ear, uh, my left ear was really bad, it was ringing, and, and a lot of pain, and I couldn't hear out of it. Uh, and I started losing hearing a bit in my, in my right ear, and I was walking to my car to go to work, and I, uh, I got really dizzy, and I couldn't work, so I had to go to the hospital. And I was there uh, all night from 8 o'clock to, uh, to 4 in the morning. And, uh, and what they found out, thank God, it wasn't an, it was, uh, wasn't an infection, but it was my, actually, I have a condition because I'm diabetic. I also have eczema, and I have other, uh, other uh, 
the autoimmune problems uh, that are uh, that are genetic, I guess, that uh, comes in, and, and as you age, get older, um, you have more problems, uh, especially being diabetic. Uh, and what uh, what it was is my action, my earwax had impacted, and on my left, on my right side, it wasn't too bad. The uh, managed to clear it up pretty quickly, but this took about 15 minutes of scraping and flushing to get my uh, my my ear clear on my left hand, on my left side. And uh, so I had almost 75% uh, blockage in that. I had 10% blockage in my right. And uh, once they cleared my left ear, it was, it was quite a, uh, wasn't the most comfortable feeling, the most comfortable experience because uh, the doctor had to keep flushing a, a syringe full of uh, alcohol and uh, some other chemicals. And they flush it several times in your ear. And usually the first time, it usually comes right out, but they had to scrape a bit with tools. And uh, they said there was a risk that it could have uh, caused a small uh, hole in my, my uh, eardrum. But I was very lucky that I got to them in time because I, I, uh, they told me if I had no way, if I had waited much longer, the pressure was going to build on my left ear and I could have caused the, my, my eardrum to burst uh, or cause a small proliferation. So uh, it was a good thing I got, I got there in time. You know, I had to wait uh, like seven hours in the hospital because there, I couldn't see my family. Usually my general practitioner I had done about five years ago with my general practitioner. And my new doctor hasn't done it yet, but usually about every six or eight months, my ears get really plugged now with um, with uh, wax. It becomes really plugged and hard, uh, and and my hearing starts to go. So, um, but it was I did oh, I thought I had, for sure I had an infection because the the pressure stuff that was building. But uh, thank goodness I got there in time. I thank the doctors at the uh, Dartmouth General Hospital. I was the last patient there for, uh, before the day shift. And uh, the, uh, the doctor and the nurse uh, really helped uh, get out. Of course, it, was, it wasn't the most pleasurable experience, but uh, afterwards I could hear better than I ever had in months or, or even years, I'd say. It was really, it's still, I still have a really sensitive hearing now, super sensitive compared to what it was prior to that. So uh, the doctor did a great job on that, and that's why I didn't have my show yesterday. Uh, and then I slept in today because I, I didn't get home to like uh, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock by the time I got to bed, and I woke up at... Uh, my alarm set for uh, for uh, one o'clock, but I woke up several times before that. There was noises outside, banging. Someone delivered a package to my door. Uh, my alarm, my other my other alarm clock went off too early. Someone else tried to call me, um, so I ended up I had to shut everything off because it's getting too many disrupted. So finally, I have to work by two o'clock uh, today. It was a really slow day, uh, taxi wise, it was, because it wasn't hot though. It definitely, it was down. It was only like like 18, 19 degrees. And uh, it was the humidity was gone, so it was so much more comfortable it was back to regular Nova Scotia uh, late spring weather, as opposed to our our uh, dog days of summer, super hot, thirty almost forty degrees at times. We had for the last uh, two days. I was corrected. I said that we had a heat wave, but I was corrected by uh, one of my uh, my fans out there. Told me um, that a heat wave has to be three days or more of consecutive weather. I mean, this is our definition for Halifax. In most eastern Canada, it has to be three consecutive days of 30 plus temperature, and it has to be above more than three days, and it has to be considered that's considered heat wave. Um, and we had th two two days within the 30s and, and over 30 one day, but it wasn't consistent for three days straight of uh, of, of 30. Well, it felt like it was hot all along because we were even we were in the high 20s for before that, the high 26, 27, and with humidity it was over 30. Uh, but I was corrected by one of my uh, my fans, I think, for their input that it was uh, it was actually not a heat wave, but it was called a heat spell or a, a temperature invariance, and there's all kinds of scientific formulas for it. But basically, it was a warm spell we had for a few days, and now we're back into uh, a less warm spell. And but by the weekend, it's supposed to warm up again, so hopefully we won't feel as hot uh, 30 plus temperatures for for a while to the end of the summer or mid summer. Uh, but I'm still adjusting my ears, taking time. I had to get my balance back, and I'm adjusting because I can't even my own voice. I sometimes I, I hear myself too loud, and uh, I have to be careful because now, now that my hearing's much better and my, my ears are cleared out, that I'm super sensitive. I can hear I can hear birds chirping and everything again. Um, I couldn't even hear my. Uh, it was so bad at the point when I before I went to the hospital that I couldn't hear my engine running. I, I couldn't tell if my car was running. I tried having radio seat. I turned my I stared off all the way. I still couldn't hear. Properly, it could only sound it was very low, and I couldn't hear the beat. I couldn't hear um, any of the, the the treble or any of the sounds. And uh, even my my door, I, had, I was getting to a point like the, the two or three days, I couldn't even hear if someone beeped their horn. Unless it was on my right side, I couldn't hear them at all. Anything from my left was totally 
you know, muted. Uh, and it was it was it was a terrible feeling because my balance was off all the time. And it just got worse and worse. And I thought for sure this has been an infection or this is how my hearing's going to go. And uh, but you know, luckily I went through that and hopefully I can speak clearly too. I noticed if you notice back on my video or two days ago too, my I wasn't speaking quite clearly. I was kind of muffled, but because I couldn't tell because our you know, our brain and our our mind and our voice and everything all connected. So. Uh, although at the same time I disconnected in between where I couldn't hear my, my own voice so I didn't know uh, when I was speaking or how I was doing it. And uh, so that's why I was a little muffled the last couple of days. But I, and I also had my microphone the, the wrong way. I had it, uh, the microphone over here was facing in and so it was being blocked by my shirt and by my, my body. So uh, hopefully this is much clearer now. Um, and so what I did is after that I worked, uh, I first I got my first call like right away and it was a $5 call went around the corner. Uh, and then boom, right back to back, I got another call. And that uh, that was a good little call. Went to the other side of the city. Went, uh, so that was a good $15 call. And as soon as I got back, then uh, I got a, uh, I had my computer give me a dispatch call. And I picked up a gentleman uh, from uh, downtown Halifax, actually. I picked up uh, off of Spring Garden Road. Uh, um, so on the side street, and I believe it was Birmingham. And he went out, all the way out to uh, Larry Utex. So that was a good $35 call. Uh, so that made my day. And then... Um, on the way back, I got another call that went from uh, downtown out to, uh, over to Dartmouth. Um, so when I, once I got to Dartmouth, then I wrapped up for the day pretty much, because by then it was like 8 o'clock, 9, there was not a thing. There was like a ghost town. And there was only like three or four cars out there, and nothing was moving. And, and uh, so from 8 o'clock to then, so I, I wrapped up. And um, basically, uh, after that, I, uh, I came home. Well, actually, I stopped at the, uh, the grocery store, because my friend, she needed milk, but... I couldn't get a hold of her on the phone, so there was no point buying milk if I didn't know if I could get a hold of her. And she, uh, I guess, had a nap, and I missed her because I talked to her afterwards. Um, I showed up to Wendy. Hi, Wendy. And um, I hope you, uh, tomorrow we get together with some milk. But I stopped in the grocery store and picked up some uh, more orange juice because there's low in orange juice. And uh, I picked up some stevia for my tea. I, I don't drink, I don't use sugar because I'm diabetic, type 2 diabetic. Uh, and also, um, I had, uh, had, so I had no gray tea. Put in my my uh ta my sorry my coffee brewer my single cup coffee brewer. I don't want to start advertising for a certain company uh, because I do have three different ones now. I have a, uh, a, a, a I have a it starts with the T one. I have the K one. I also have the N one. Um, I'm gonna get a better N one soon, but um, I uh, buy them usually Valley Village somewhere that I can get them so much cheaper. And I found the one that I'm buying probably a machine to buy next week. It has a universal, so I don't have to have three machines. I can use one machine to do all three. Uh, brand uh, single cup. I know a lot of people say it's wasteful, and I'm I'm finding a solution to that because there's a new uh, new disc that you can put in for your your your, um, your single cup machine that allows you to refill it. So the K ones already have it. I had that for a long time. So you want you can refill them yourself. And I finally got one for my tea machine, and now I can make my own tea disc uh, with coffee or tea or whatever I want. And I'm saving the environment because it, it, you just uh, you just rinse it, you dump out your uh, your your spent cartridge into the garbage and stuff, and you just use a thing you rinse it out and use it again and again and again, and uh, that's a great idea. And I think I'm glad they finally got it for the T disc. It's been many years, uh, but they finally do got it now. So now I'm gonna also because I've I've also bagged. So I also grind my own coffee. I don't like uh, really pre ground coffee unless it's in the K cups or the T cups or the whatever the pre packaged ones are sealed. Uh, so I find if you buy uh, you know a brand name or even no name. Uh, coffee and it's already pre ground. I find it doesn't have the flavor as a grinder. So, so I usually buy the beans, whole beans. I got a little grinder, it only takes a few seconds to grind it myself, and that's how I make my coffee. But I, I'm a, I'm a, I admit I'm a bit of a coffee snob. I like having really good coffee, and I, I, I every day I, I try different coffees. I have a, a little uh, spinner which I put, uh, I bought a lot of different uh, coffees for my, my K machine, and my T machine, and my N machine. And every day I like having different coffees, and then they'll have an espresso, and they might have Americano. I might have a uh, a latte, and I try the the uh, chai tea. And I can't wait to try my chai chai tea. Uh, so basically, that's why I did. I enjoyed my my tea when I came home. Um, I, I forget to tell you, I stopped on the way um, home. I stopped by a pizza shop. I didn't really don't eat pizza much because pizza's not good for you. Uh, it's good once in a while as a snack, and I was I was getting really hungry, and uh, I just and also because I was in the hospital all the time yesterday, and my whole system's messed up. Um, I'm starving, you know, so I. Uh, and I, was, I was driving, and it was a little bit cooler today, so I was burning more calories because it was colder uh, today. And uh, what I did then is I just uh, stopped by and got a slice of pizza from 
a pizza shop in the downtown core of Halifax. I'm not going to mention them because they're not paying me to advertise. If they want to pay to advertise, I'll put a little icon um, over here. I'll put an icon if you want. I'll put a little ad free if you want to sponsor me. I mean, mention or test your product. So basically, that's what it is. I got a new format now. I'm going to first start the show with a, uh, a reading from uh, scripture, not necessarily the Bible, uh, but if you have other books of scripture you want to hear, if you want one uh, chapter from, uh, from another book, uh, then I'm more happy to entertain to have that one thing to start the show. I could have uh, go several Bible readings here and take a whole hour of show, but we don't want to uh, it gets, uh, be a long, an hour long show. And uh, Passing our read to you as well, and uh, also have snippets and bits from uh, other uh, other uh, preachers and uh, other uh, religious leaders, not necessarily uh, traditional religion, but also from uh, other ones as well. To elders, uh, videos from elders and stuff, as long as it's not copyright material, um, or if I do have a permission from the author to to uh, show the video, I will. So basically, that's our, our show for today. Um, uh, we got to pray uh, once again as we, we do. Or, or today, you know, I pray to in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the God and Goddesses, whatever you believe in. I pray that the G7 summit uh, in uh, England goes well with the world leaders. I pray that they come to a way to help out the third world countries get the vaccines. Uh, we also pray that for guidance for Joe Biden and all the other uh, G7 leaders, help give them guidance and help them to help. Uh, third world and, and second world nations that can't uh, get true access as, as the, the first, first world G7 can. And let's help pray in the name of Lord Jesus and all the gods and goddesses that you may or may not believe in that we uh, that they give the leadership strength over the summit time and give them peace organization and help them uh, to make wise decisions. In the name of Lord Jesus God the Father and the Holy Ghost the Son and all the spirits that may exist in gods and goddesses. I pray in the name. Amen. Also, I have another prayer now. We'll continue in our prayer for Israel and in Palestine and the Middle East. Let's pray that the uh, bloodshed ends there. Let's pray that the ceasefire holds up and that there become peace, that they can uh, be brother to brother, even if they have differences, to, to uh, reconcile their differences. And for Israel and the Middle Eastern countries to have peace there. I pray in the name of the Father, the Holy Ghost, the Son, the gods and goddesses, whatever you believe in. Amen. So thank you very much, folks, for tuning in. Uh, if you have any thoughts, suggestions, feel free to let me know. I also want to uh, let you know that there is uh, where you can send donations to me. I'm just going to uh, give me one second. I'm going to put, put, put a little uh, pause here for a second. Um, and uh, we're gonna, I'm going to give you the address where you can send your donations to. send donations to me to help out my uh, help out with my show here or to help out with uh, with production or if you have any ideas or thoughts uh, this is my basic contact information I'm going to have the website up here soon and the the phone number to contact me uh, and this is just basically you can send uh, donations to uh, Reverend Paul Boyd Canada at 180 Pomegranate Circle Suite 2 3 sorry Suite 300 Sacramento California 95 uh, 834 the United States of America you can send it there and uh, as I get my Canadian address set up I will be putting that up as well but for now you can send donations or thoughts or ideas or prayer requests uh, to this address right here once again that's Reverend Paul Boyd Canada Universal Life Church 180 Promagate Circle Suite 300 Sacramento California 95834 United States of America thank you very much for tuning in I'm going to come back to me for one final time before we end the show. Uh, and I just want to thank everyone. Remember that uh, God loves you. I love you. 
the universe is, loves you and all the gods and goddesses out there that you believe in, believe in you as well. And uh, peace to all.